Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about a camera that I absolutely love. I picked this guy up about a year ago and I've not looked back since. Most of you know that I used to shoot with cannons but I don't do that anymore because this little guy stole my heart, my soul and my mind. And especially because it has a really friendly budget. As compared to cameras in the same price point, the quality you get from this camera is phenomenal. Today we're going to talk about the Fuji X-T3 and I'm going to give you all the reasons why I think this is a great camera and a few little reasons why it might be a deal breaker. So stick around to the end of this video and I'm pretty sure that you're going to fall in love with the Fuji X-E3 just as much as I have. Disclaimer though, this camera was not sent to me by Fuji. I bought it with my own money. Therefore, all these experiences and opinions that I have is completely unbiased. I'm just telling you what I think genuinely about this camera. Let's get going. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. Like most people in Ghana, I started my photography and filmmaking career shooting primarily on Canon. I didn't hear about the Fuji system until I was in like my third year in uni where my lecturer, Nanaresh, I'm going to link him down in the description, was using the Fuji X-T1. Well, um, normally there's a stereotype about small cameras, right? People think small cameras suck because they're tiny, they can't do a lot. You know, Canon users love the whole huge Canon stuff and I used to be one of those people, so I just loved it as well. So the first time I saw the Fuji system, I was like, ha, this camera is too small to do anything. So I completely ignored it. Until I saw some few stills from the X-T1 and I was getting a bit more interested. But that interest was not sold until I met a pack for the first time and I found that he was also shooting on the X-T3. I had already loved his videos for a while, especially the ones he was creating on his Sony. But when I saw the Fuji systems in the videos he was creating on that, I was just blown away. But what sealed the deal for me was the price. With cameras in the same category, the amount of money you'll be paying for such quality is like two times or sometimes three times the price of what the Fuji X-T3 will give you. So let's get going to my main reasons why I love the Fuji X-T3. The first thing I like about the Fuji X-T3 is resolution and frame rates. This guy can shoot at 4K 60 which is incredible. For most shooters out there, you, I'm sure you've been in the situation shooting on Canons or some other brands where you have to shoot at a lower resolution to get your higher frame rate. For instance, uh, with uh, the Canon EOS R, you have to shoot at 1080p to get 60 frames per second because the 4K only does 24 frames. But with the Fuji, the 4K does 60 frames so you can still get optimum quality and you can still maintain the slow motion shots without having to drop down in resolution, which is something I absolutely love. It also shoots 1080p at 120 frames per second. So if you want to get those super smooth slow motion shots, this camera can help you get all that really smooth slow motion shots. Although I don't really enjoy the 1080p as much because of the quality, uh, it's still an option that is incredible because most cameras at this price point wouldn't even offer you that to begin with. So the first reason why I love the Fuji is because of the 4K quality, especially because it has 4K 60 and it's just phenomenal. The second reason why I love the Fuji is the color. Like the color from the Fuji is great. I understand this might be very subjective, but coming from Canon, which has an incredible color sign, I was just blown away when I realized the Fuji really treats dark skin tones quite beautifully. I personally love how it treats my skin. I'm sure you've seen from my previous videos, most of them were shot by the Fuji. I think the last four videos I posted were shot by the Fuji and they look absolutely nice. Like I love how it lights up my skin. Another thing about the color set, it has as these film simulations, my favorite being Eterna, which makes your film look almost cinematic, straight out of camera. Aside that, it shoots in log. So log is like the flat profile where you are able to maintain your optimum dynamic range and be able to use your camera to the fullest. The Fuji's log is called the F-log and that allows you to shoot to, to get a lot of data so you can go back into post-production and color your stuff, right? One thing that the Fuji did for me when I got it was it forced me to learn how to color correct and color grade. I started using 
using DaVinci for the first time after I got my Fuji because I started shooting in F-Log and I was training myself to see things in the log profile to learn how to expose for log, to learn how to color grade log to look good. So the Fuji was what got me into color grading. And now since I'm shooting the Black Magic, which also has a B-roll log format, it's more familiar with me. And as a filmmaker moving on in your career, you're going to be shooting with cameras that have various types of log profiles. So um, if this is your sort of entry camera into the cinema space, it's a good entry camera because it helps you to get uh, the log format. Uh, back when I was using my 6D Mark II and even the 5D Mark IV, um, you didn't really have a log format. I mean, to get C log on the 5D Mark IV, you have to sort of ship it off to Canon, pay a certain price for them to install it for you. Or you'd have to install certain plugins like the Cine Style or some Magic Lantern. They weren't really C Log, C Log like the cinema cameras. Uh, they were sort of like something that would may make a flat profile. That wasn't so helpful. It would usually break the files when you're grading them in post production and stuff like that. So it wasn't so enjoyable to work with. But the Fuji files is just beautiful. It's easy. It's awesome to work with. Another very interesting part, especially for the post-production side, is it shoots 10 bits 420 straight onto your SSD card and 10 bits 422 if you add an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja V. So you can get lots of color out of the raw footage when you're coloring it in post. It's just incredible that you can get such quality from a tiny camera at this price point. It's just incredible. This other reason could easily be the first, but I put it at 1.5, right between the first and second, right? Is the price. The Fresh in Box Fuji X-T3 comes at $1,100, which is incredible. I mean, comparing it to other cameras in the same range, like the EOS R, the A7S3, and other cameras, they are all way over $1,700 or $1,500, which, which is just crazy. That's a lot of money. But for what you're getting from the Fuji at $1,100, I mean, you can't break this deal. I picked mine used for about $890 on eBay. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you guys to buy from eBay, except you know exactly what you're doing. But in my experience, it's been a phenomenal um, dealing process with all these different vendors and people who are selling their cameras online. So I picked mine up, it's been about a year now. I've had no issues. I've gone ahead to pick up a second SD3 and I might be picking up a third SD3 very soon because I just love the camera so much. For sure, getting for the price, 4K 60, 80, 120, 10 bit 420, 10 bit 422. You just can't beat it. It's it's just it's, it's I, I don't know what to say. It's it's a steal. <laughs> the third reason why I love the Fuji X-T3 is because of the variety of lenses you can afford, right? There are many producers that I just heard of because I started shooting with the Fuji X-T3, like Mikey, Seven Artisans, Viltrox, all these players make specific lenses for the Fuji X-T3 and that's just amazing. You can get really nice lenses for really affordable prices, vintage lenses that will just blow you out of the water with good characteristics and very nice feels in them. It's just amazing. Unlike your other counterparts, you are buying lenses which are heavy and bulky, sometimes twice or three times the cost of the camera body itself. In the Fuji space, most of the lenses are quite affordable. On the flip side, the native lenses that come from Fuji are a bit pricey, but what makes them really great is my fourth reason, which is the autofocus on those lenses are mad. Usually, I would expect Canon to be the end all be all autofocusing kin because I just love the autofocusing in Canon. In Fuji, I haven't really been disappointed yet except for when I adapt to other lenses. For instance, when I want to use my Canon lenses, you have to use an adapter. And I have the two adapters, the Fringer and then the Viltrox. The Fringer does extremely well, much better than I expected. Although it's not as good as the Canon, it does really well in focusing. The Viltrox is a bit slow sometimes, but I use it because it gives me uh, a nice range, which I'll talk about later on. So that is my third and fourth reason why I love the XE3. The fifth reason why I love the XE3 is the size. Just look at this guy. This guy is so cute and tiny. You can have this with you, do a lot of really high quality work and people wouldn't even know you were doing it. I mean, working here in Ghana, sometimes when people see you with a big camera and everything, they automatically get intimidated and stuff like that, right? I remember uh, I was working once time in the market with a big camera setup, I think with a 5D Mark IV with, this, with other rigs on it. I look so intimidating. And the moment you get close to somebody, they either shy away or they feel like you're doing something that's going to cost a lot of money. So then they try to extort money from you and stuff like that. I've not really had that experience with the Fuji because of the size. People usually mistaking it for a beginner's camera or a hobbyist camera. So they don't get as intimidated as much. But on the flip side, 
that stereotype I used to give other people when I used to shoot on cameras, like the camera is tiny, can it do anything? I get the same feeling from other filmmakers and other shooters as well. When they see me with the XE3 shooting a gig, they're like, oh, how come you're using this tiny camera? What can it do? Like people don't really know about the Fuji as much where I am. So whenever they see it, they act a bit weird until they see the final footage and you're like, whoa. That little camera gave you this good footage. I'm like, yep. If you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> That's the fifth reason why I love it. That's the economics of the camera. I also love the way the buttons are placed on this camera and the way they feel. It gives it this vintage vibe, like a vintage camera, but it has a very smart setup of where the ISO button is, where the shutter speed button is. All these mechanical buttons brings you much closer to your camera and your craft. And I like the intimacy that I have now because I get to touch and feel all these things. Some people might say it's not so necessary, but ever since I started using it, I've grown to love the economics and just the clicking sound is just so fun. Like you can feel yourself doing something. So that is another reason why I love it. The sixth reason why I love the Fuji X-T3 is because of the power options it gives you. So the Fuji X-T3 is the first camera I've used that allows me to add a power bank as a battery source. So this rig right here allows me to just slip on the power bank into this pouch and then I can just sort of go through my whole day. With the power bank I use, I'm able to shoot about six to eight hours uh, without even having to charge my battery because it charges the battery once it's connected and everything just works so seamlessly. So I love the way this gives me the option to do that. I guess it's super incredible. Now let's get onto the things that I do not really like about the Fuji XE3. And on top of that list is the battery life. God, the battery life is bad. Trust me, the battery life is the worst I've seen. It's even, hmm. No, it's not. <laughs> the Black Magic battery life is the worst I've seen. <laughs> but the Fuji X-T3's battery life is like the second worst I've seen. It's terrible. 30 minutes is dead. So you have to get a lot of batteries to help you power throughout the day. That's where they fix it with that adaptability issue where you can actually add in a power bank to replace that, which is smart. But I wouldn't want to have to spend extra money to get a power bank with enough wattage to actually supply to the camera for it to last a whole day. Unlike the Canon, you can shoot on one battery for pretty much like three hours without it running out. But with the Fuji, you have to change batteries all the time. The power bank is a solution, but it shouldn't have gotten that far. Another thing is, well, the Fuji batteries are not so expensive, so you can afford to buy a lot more batteries, but it's just an extra step and more money to spend, which shouldn't have been the case. But that is what I hate about the camera the most is the battery life. Second thing I hated about the camera, and I said hated, right? That's because I no longer hate it, but it's something that could be a deal breaker for a lot of people, the fact that it's a crop sensor. The camera I had before was a 6D Mark II, and when I moved to this, that was a full frame camera, so I had a much wider field of view. When I moved to the XE, Three, everything was so cropped. If you're in Ghana, you realize that most of our spaces are quite tight, so it's difficult to get a lot of room and you might need to use a lot of wide angle lenses. So imagine doing that on a crop sensor where your field of view is not as wide as your full frame, but rather cropped to like 1.5. And I'll show you a demonstration so you can see just how much footage you lose if you shoot on the XC3. And it crops in more when you shoot at 4K CC, which isn't fun. But over the year, I've come to love the advantage I get with a crop sensor, especially because with one lens, I get to have more than just one. A typical example is my 50 millimeter right now here could be acting as a 75 millimeter because of the crop factor and that gives me a bit of like an 85 view which is something that I love really well uh, also when I put more um, zoom lenses like 100 mm I get something like a 150 mm which can get me closer especially when I'm shooting interviews and I want to create more background compression and other things like that it it actually doesn't bother me anymore. And also when I got the Blackmagic, which also is a crop sensor, I was much more familiar with it because I had been shooting for the Fuji for about a year and I was familiar with the crop sensor now. Although I still miss my full frame friends, um, I don't really complain about crop sensor either, but I know it could be a deal breaker for most of you. The third thing I hate about the Fuji XT3 is the lens options. Now, I already said the lens option was an advantage. This time it's a disadvantage because most of the lens options that make you love the fact that they are all the options are from different brands. Therefore, they are not really fully optimized for the Fuji body and you have to rely on certain adapters. For instance, the Fringer adapter is the closest adapter to giving you good mechanical autofocus if you have to adapt a lens like Canon or Sigma like I do right now. Right now, I usually shoot with the Fuji X-T3 with my Sigma 18 to 35 and the autofocus is great. It usually misses slightly or rarely ever misses, if any. The autofocus is not as fast as the native Fuji lenses, but it's plenty fast enough for me. The only one that I don't enjoy is when I'm using the Voltrox 
and the autofocus is quite slow on the Voltrox, but the Voltrox also gives me a second advantage. If I want to mimic a full frame field of view and put a 50 mm onto my Voltrox adapter, then I can get 51 mm instead of getting 75 mm. So that's why I use the Voltrox, but the autofocus on that is pretty bad. These adapters have made me hate my experience with the Fuji X-C3, but I've gotten used to it and it doesn't hurt as much. I've also invested a bit more into the Fuji native lenses, especially the ones that Voltrox makes, and I'm getting more comfortable with trusting the autofocus because with those lenses I don't have the issue of lagging I don't have the issue of jumping focus or other things like that and the focus breathing is very minimal and the way the focus through works is really beautiful it's smooth and the transition works just as well so I've been able to come to fall in love with it as well and the last reason that I also don't like the Fuji X-C3 is because it doesn't have the IBIS that's the inbuilt image stabilizer mostly because I'm shooting video having an inbuilt image stabilizer it's, it's something that I would have absolutely loved but for the price point and everything you get, you really can't complain. Although it would be sweet if they could add it, which they did in the Fuji X-T4. That is a bit more expensive. For the X-T3, there's no image stabilizer, so you have to either stick your camera on a gimbal to give it a smooth motion or rig it up so it can become quite heavy so it can take away some of those micro jitters or you have to put in a tripod or some type of a stable unit. So that's it for the X-C3. To be honest, this camera is one of the cameras that I have enjoyed to shoot with and I'll continue to enjoy to shoot with. Uh, Fuji made uh, the bigger version of this, which is the X-T4. It has more features. They were able to address certain issues like the battery life. They were able to address certain issues like the image stabilizer. And also one thing that I failed to mention, uh, the Fuji X-C3 has this type of adjustable screen which for video creators might be a bit difficult uh, because coming from um, cameras like the um, Canon X-T2, the screen can actually articulate all the way to the back so you can see yourself in case like I want to film myself. But with this, I can't do that. Uh, I have to sort of uh, focus on myself and then press record and hope that I'm, I'm in focus, right? Now with the Fuji X-T4, added articulating the screen, that makes it easy for you to film yourself and other things like that to get really low angle shots and really high angle shots. So it's been great that they've been able to fix it, but it cost about $400 more than this piece uh, for fresh in box and about $200 more for the used version or sometimes $300 more for the used version, uh, which is something that's a bummer because that's a total of $1,300, I think, which is quite expensive. So uh, that is why I don't want to venture into that space, but the XD3 is something that I love. Occasionally, I joined this with the X-T2 to shoot a lot of interviews when I need a second camera. And that camera is even cheaper. I think for a fresh inbox, you can pick it up for about $700 and about $500 for a used version, which is something that's unbeatable. It also shoots in 4K, except you don't get the 4K 60 frames per second. You only get the 4K 24, which is plenty fine for a B cam because you don't really need it to do all that much work. You just need the 4K features out of it. The color is just as good although it has just a little bit of a green tint, but I've come to love it as well. And if you're good with your color grading process, you can correct it in post-production, which isn't so much work at all. So I thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you love this video just as much as I love creating it. The Fuji x TV, like I said, is a phenomenal camera for the price. And if you're a filmmaker, or you're planning to get into cinema, quite seriously, and you want a good place to start, I would recommend the Fuji x TV for you any day. My name is Joshua Cleopas. I make videos like this. If you're interested to watch more, check out my other videos on my channel. Subscribe, share with your friends to keep this channel growing. And I really appreciate it if you do. Catch you next time on another video. Bye. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW.